y'all. Good evening. I am so glad to be back. I hope you all have been doing well. I hope you all have been doing fine. It is a new year. This is going to be my first video of the year. And this is how I wanted to start it off. Know why? Because it's a lot of people that need this very thing right here what I'm about to talk about. Okay. Today, I'm going to be talking to you all about deliverance and the signs that you may need deliverance. You may be in need of deliverance. Okay. So I have about 26 of these. If you all will bear with me. I think it's 25, but I have a bonus or whatever. Yep, it's 25, but I have a bonus one here at the end. If you guys will bear with me, this video may be a little lengthy, but we'll see. And hopefully I can come back with some more videos and share with you all today because I have a lot of things I want to talk to you all about, okay? But signs that you need deliverance, okay? The first one I'm going to go ahead and start is that you cannot stop eating. You cannot stop eating no matter how much you have eaten. No, and you're not pregnant, you know, you don't, you're not high, I guess you could say. Some people smoke uh, weed and things like that and they get high and they get the munchies and stuff. But this isn't the case, you know, you're just eating and you can't stop, you guys. You have to get deliverance or whatever to break a lot of that off. It could be a form of a generational curse too as well, where you're in gluttony. And um, I want to bring up the fact that the the devil and his goons have an insatiable appetite. I noticed that whenever I was in need of deliverance, there was a certain hunger that I could not quench, the, uh, a certain hunger that I couldn't fulfill, and a certain thirst that I could not quench. I mean, it was just unquenchable. And that was a sign that I needed deliverance back then, okay? So you guys keep these things in mind. Um, also, I'm going to start off with some of the, mo the lighter ones. Then towards the middle, I'm going to get more um, in depth and a little, you know, a little bit stronger into uh, signs that you may need deliverance. And then towards the end, I think it gets a little higher too as well. And it kind of balances out. So you guys, okay, pay attention to these things right here. Number two, I have addiction addiction of any kind it don't matter what it is if you cannot stop doing something it is an addiction it is a stronghold you're supposed to be able to stop doing things which is why we're supposed to fast that even goes down to your food we're not supposed to be um you know just indulging in certain things all the time the law says to do things in moderation and that includes everything and only way you're supposed to um be deeply deep into anything as if it's into christ anything else you have to put a stop button on at some point all right and i wouldn't recommend any of these but the addiction kind is smoking alcohol drugs pills etc if you can't stop doing something and you feel like you have to have it to function then you need deliverance you guys you have to go through a deliverance process i mean some i mean what at one point do you get tired of spending your money on cigarettes okay at what point do you get sick and tired of spending your money on drugs and alcohol? Because it just takes everything from you at the end of the day. It takes everything. All right. A lot of people could break free from addiction by simply getting deliverance. In regular deliverance as well, you have to go through the deliverance process and the healing process too. You may have to go to um, a counselor or something like that to kind of help you regulate some of that stuff. All right. Okay, and you could also leave your environment. Your environment plays a major role in what it is that you ended up doing if you go back to why you may have started these things in the first place. All right. Number three, I have anger. Anger. You're in you're angry all the time. It's you're easily angered. You go you you may throw fits of rage sometimes. You may have thoughts of hurting people a lot, you know anger that is a that is a spirit a spirit of anger a spirit of rage okay it could it could boil down to rage but anger has certain levels to it so if it's not a righteous anger a righteous indignation you may need to get that checked out okay spiritual these things that are spiritual and needing spiritual assistance it requires a spiritual doctor dr god or dr jesus as i've mentioned before to get deliverance to get it out all right Number four, we have constant thoughts of taking your own life or someone else's life. Constant thoughts of taking your own life, you guys. You're not supposed to want to take your own life. Your life is absolutely beautiful. You, I mean, even if, it's, even if you're going through a lot right now, you're still alive. 
So you have a chance. You have a fighting chance to get things together. You have a chance to get things right and to make things right. The devil is a lie, okay? You should not want to be taking yourself out of here. You should not want to hurt yourself at all, okay? That's that's just you got to get you got to get deliverance to remove those thoughts. All right? And those are demons wanting you to think and feel that way. All right? So, number 5. Number 5, I have anxious shaking. Like that nervous shake, you can't really put a finger on it, but you're a little shaky. I remember going through witchcraft and people would ask me, why are you shaking? And I said, I don't know. You know, I never knew why I was shaking. It was just a weird little, you know, nervous shake that I had. Like I had really bad anxiety, which um is actually understandable because of all the things that I had went through. I'm surprised I wasn't really, you know, shaking worse than that. But I definitely had some a lot of trauma and things like that. But um, I also remember after witchcraft, I ended up doing that again, and it was a sign that I needed deliverance. I needed to go through another session of deliverance, guys. Um, And it may not be all the time. It could be like every now and again when you get this shake. You know, that's, that's something that's in your vessel that's not supposed to be there. All right? Number six, I have demonic and sinful thoughts. Wicked thoughts. Mostly constant. Mostly constant wicked thoughts. The Bible says to cast down all imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. All right. That's in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. We are supposed to cast those thoughts down, rebuke them, renounce them and cast them down in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that isn't, you know, of God, anything that tries to take away from what the word told you or what God told you. Uh, any thoughts that you know are wrong that are not from God, you're supposed to cast those things down. Rebuke them and cast them down in Jesus' name because if you don't and you entertain those thoughts, they will take over your mind. That's just like an open door for the enemy. He's like, okay, you're going to entertain me? All right, I'm going to send more. I'm going to send more. And a lot of people don't know and they just entertain the thought without saying no and rebuking it and casting it down. All right? By the way, y'all, if I have a little sniffle thing, I, I um had a little sinus thing going on like a week ago, and um I sounded like a man at first, so that's why I didn't come on here earlier. I said, I'm not about to come on here sounding like that, you know, and like y'all gonna be like, that is not Nikisha, okay? That is not her. <laughs> I wasn't finna come on here sounding like a man, but all right, y'all. So. <laughs> all right, number seven. Number seven, I have, you have been indulging in sexual sin. Sexual sins such as masturbation, porn, and just outright actual sex. If you've been indulging in these things, especially, you know, masturbation and porn, well, all of it is is open doors, but I meant to say mostly like sex with other people, mostly, that is a sign that you need deliverance. That's a sign that you may need to get something removed, okay? Because that is one of the most common ways that the enemy can infiltrate somebody's vessel, all right? Also, we have number eight. You are depressed and can't shake it off. You depressed, you can't shake it. You still you having racing thoughts. You having all of these demonic feelings and this sadness where you can't get out of bed and it's been going on for days, for days, probably weeks, probably months, things like that. Nine times out of ten, you need deliverance to get that stuff off because it's going to cause you to do more self harm than anything good we're not supposed to be laying in bed sad and crying and a lot of times you don't even know what you're sad about that's a demon that is demons you have to get it casted out in the mighty name of jesus okay all right so i'm gonna read this scripture to you guys i'm gonna take a little break from this and read this scripture because i absolutely love this you can also find this in matthew as well you guys deliverance is the children's bread you know, I tell I was telling you guys in another video before that, you know, Christians have to get deliverance too. Um, I still get deliverance just to make sure and just to ensure that I am good. I do not want any unclean nothing in inside of me or on me or nothing. Okay. I want to be as clean as possible. Even though our righteousness is still as filthy rags to God, I want to come as clean as possible. Okay. All right. So we have Mark 7 and 24. It says that then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre. 
he didn't want anyone to know which house he was he was staying in, but he couldn't keep it a secret. <laughs> they found him. <laughs> right away, a woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast out the demon from her daughter. Since she was a Gentile born in Syrian, fin, fin, I, I pronounced this right earlier, S Syrian Phoenicia, Phoenicia, Jesus told her, first, I should feed the children, my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take, it isn't right to take food and throw it to dogs. Jesus was talking about taking food from his own people and giving it to the other people or whatever but she replied that's true lord but even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plate which is also true the lord answered he said good answer he said now go home for the demon has left your daughter he still delivered her daughter anyway and um when she got back her daughter when she got home her daughter was laying in bed and she had been delivered from the demon all right Okay, so we have number nine. Also, I want to tell you guys before I get to number nine, this scripture for all, uh, is also for people who think that children can't have demons. Children can have demons as well, which is why I told you all to make sure that you're giving, getting your children deliverance too. Okay? Thank you, Lord, for reminding me of that because I almost forgot to say that. Okay? Number nine, I have you have backslidden and fallen back into your old sinful ways backslidden then fell back to all your old ways you need deliverance you're back in that rabbit hole and you're gonna have to get pulled back out it's just how it is y'all number 10 you have been exposed to witchcraft which is all the videos a lot of that i have in my playlist you have been exposed to witchcraft all right check out my playlist about witchcraft if you haven't already number 11 i have you are having frequent nightmares frequent nightmares and they are causing you to lose sleep you are being tormented in your sleep type dreams okay you may need deliverance that's your spirit letting you know what's going on if you having these dreams regularly too um a lot of times the enemy will use them will infiltrate your dreams will interfere with your dreams to come in and to try to make you think stuff but it's in certain cases where you having these very um often well, you you need deliverance, okay? Better to be safe than sorry. I'll go get deliverance anyway, just to be sure. Okay, so number 12. Unexplained illness. Getting sick out of nowhere. Going to the doctor and they say they can't find anything wrong with you. Unexplained illnesses. You go to the doctor and you tell them something hurting. They do x-rays, they do CAT scans, they do blood work, things like that. They cannot find anything wrong. That's because it is spiritual, you guys. It's not nothing physical in that way. The spiritual, um, it starts in the spiritual, then it uh, manifests in the physical, okay? Number 13, I have, okay, I'm going to jump off on a limb when I say this. When I say this, I'm going to jump right off a limb, but you are always hot, like hot all the time as far as your body temperature um, I don't know why it does that, but I was definitely hot all the time when I was going through witchcraft and I was sleep with my air on when it was freezing. And I've never been like that. I always been the type of person was, I would be a little cold before I would get hot, you know, and it's no matter how cold it was, I had my air on and would probably be sweating y'all. It was weird, weird, but number 14. You have a dark aura, a dark aura or a dark countenance. You have a dark look. Um, it's like it's always dark in your room or in your house. You're probably eating in the dark all the time. And I'm telling, you know, you just in the dark a lot. I remember um, when I used to go to the bathroom or somewhere or whatever i would just go in there and then people like you're not gonna turn on the light and i didn't even notice really that the light wasn't on i just i couldn't hardly i couldn't see anyway not really but because i had the veil over my eyes but i still didn't think of bother to even turn the light on demons like darkness 
It's just how it is. This is how they are. They are darkness and we are the light. So, number 15, you have an eating disorder. It's going to get a little real, y'all. You have an eating disorder, mostly bulimia. Okay? Bulimia. What is bulimia? It is a life-threatening eating disorder. Like a person would binge eat and vomit everything up after that. Okay? You may need to get that casted out. There's self-harm. It's a form of self-harm. And you may need to get that casted out um, with everything that's going on with this eating thing with you. Uh, some people binge eat and just keep it. And some people binge eat and vomit it back up. All right. Number 16, y'all. We're almost through. You are cutting yourself. Causing self-harm, drawing blood. Okay, you need you have to go get deliverance to get this thing casted out. Demons love to uh they love blood too because there's like power in our blood and things like that. But we're not supposed to be cutting ourselves, you guys, or uh, making marks in our flesh. I'm gonna go ahead and read Leviticus 19 and 28. It says, do not cut your bodies for the dead and do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. And the other version says, do not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Okay. All right. Number 17, we have, you are stagnant, stuck and not growing. I've told you guys about this being stagnant is from the enemy. Do if you are stagnant and you are move you you trying to move but you're not going anywhere, or you're just not going anywhere. Period. You've been in the same place you choose in five years ago. That's not normal. Even a year ago, y'all. Even a year. It's supposed to be some kind of growth somewhere. Even if it's not in a specific spot, and um, it should be some growth somewhere within you or within whatever it is that you're working on. You know. Number eighteen. This is a big one to me, okay? You cannot understand God's word. You can understand his word, y'all. A lot of times that is demonic where something is fixing it the way you can't reciprocate. You cannot comprehend what the word is trying to tell you. That is most likely a demon that's blocking your spiritual receptors to Christ. And you're going to have to give your life over to Christ. Repent and turn from your wicked ways and really repent. So that you can hear God and understand what he's saying. A certain level of understanding of Christ comes from having a relationship with him. You have to have a relationship with God. He will explain to you these things, what these things mean. Because the Lord is actually very deep. So you're going to have to have a relationship to get and understand a lot of things that he's saying, y'all. Okay? Read 2 Timothy three sixteen to 17, okay? I'm going to read this for you. I'm going to read, I think it's 3 and 16. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what's right. All right. Uh, like I was saying, scripture is our bread and butter. It's our meat and our milk. Okay. It can be either or for us or both at the same time. All right. So number 19, you gossip and backbite. Gossip and backbite, you guys. I don't know about y'all, but I, I honestly have never liked gossip. <laughs> I've never liked sitting up and talking about people and stuff like that. I've never liked that at all. It always made me feel funny. It always did something to me. I never liked it. All right. And, you know, backbiting, that's malicious talk about someone who isn't present slandering a person you guys you got to get that casted out as well we're not supposed to be doing that all right number 20 you are a jealous hearted person this is a tormenting spirit that harbors other spirits you guys i've talked about this too as well this is a tormenting spirit the jealous spirit we don't want no parts of that one because it turned into a murderous spirit it can turn into all kind of other things and it torments the person that is jealous. The jealous hearted person is being tormented by jealousy in itself. There are a lot of successful people out here. You run yourself crazy being mad at everybody. Somebody got to win. All right. Number 21. You love to argue. 
love to argue you have an argumentative spirit every time somebody say something you got to say something back it don't even matter what it is they could be absolutely 100 right or 95 percent right but you have to add something on there you know every single time you don't really listen you feel like you may be the one right all the time you know that's the argumentative spirit you know begging to differ all the time um you have to get that casted out as well you know you have to be able to listen to somebody instead of thinking that you know everything that is that's not right y'all all right number 22 okay you love to watch demonic movies and television shows love to watch demonic movies and television shows scary movies and things like that that is the spirit um you especially shows shows that show a lot of blood and like killings and things like that y'all that stuff can get in through your spirit and you don't want no parts of that either that stuff gets right in through your eye gates or whatever get in through your ear gates you don't want no parts of that that's why a lot of those kids back remember when they was uh playing those video games and stuff those violent video games and they ended up actually hurting people from playing those video games it's the same thing you know it got in through those children's ear gates and eye gates okay all right, number 23, you feel mentally slow. I know this is going to be a, a weird one, but you you feel slow. A lot of times that is a demonic attack on your mind. And you know you're not slow, but you feel like that. And I, I know that w when I was going through witchcraft, it made me slow. I was, uh, I was surprised. I remember how to tie my shoe at, at some point, but it definitely made me slow like I was dumb. Like logic, everything went out the window. It made me really stupid, okay? And that's the point. It re it wants people dumbed down. Hint, hint. Okay? Number 24. 24. You are fearful. You have fear of death. You have a lot of fears, you know? You have fear of, of, of success. You have fear of speaking. Just fear. You have a lot of fears. You got to get that casted out, the spirit of fear. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You have to have a sound mind. The spirit of fear is not supposed to be in a child of God at all. All right. Number 25, you guys, we're almost through. You have totally and completely. This is a this is one y'all probably gonna y'all may disagree. But I I feel like Oh, you need deliverance off this one. 25, you have totally and completely given up on love. I'm not talking about you took a break or nothing. I'm talking about you just threw in the towel and just was like, I don't, I I, I give up on love. How you gonna give up on God? God is love, okay? God is love. So we don't need to be giving up on love out here. I did notice a lot of you all, and I, trust me, I, I get it because I felt the same way at first. I was like, oh, I'm not studying none of that <laughs> right now, which is fine. But don't give up on love, you guys. That is a beautiful thing if it's attained and it's with the proper person. All right. Speaking of love, I'm still seeing a lot of those love signs, you guys. A lot of them. The Lord is going to make a shift in that area very, very soon. I feel like he's already made one. It just has to come down the way um, at a certain time for God's people to meet their God-ordained people, okay? You got to heal, get the knowledge from God on love, get the knowledge from God on love, and do it the right way next time. Do it the right way. All right, and the bonus we have... You have been dabbling in spiritual acts that are without Christ. Any spiritual acts that are ungodly, you know which ones are ungodly and you've been doing those, you may need deliverance because you opened up a door. You've opened up a gateway, a door to the uh, demonic realm if it didn't have anything to do with the Heavenly Father, y'all. All right, you got to be careful out here. The enemy is very tricky. He He's stupid, but he ain't that stupid, okay? <laughs> he ain't that stupid. He... Whenever I told you guys, whenever a, um, a person practiced something, he's been practicing bad for forever. So he's gotten good at infiltrating and setting traps for people. He's been doing it for years, for decades, okay? And also, if you are in need of deliverance, make sure that you email me. 
Miss Williams deliver people from everything, okay? It ain't just witchcraft. I just put witchcraft because that's the main thing that I want to focus on because that's the main thing that's out here plaguing people like that. And that's one of the main things that can take a person's life and the people that do it, they're taking these people's lives and they're not um, being held accountable in the physical. But what they don't realize is in the spiritual, they they about to get handed to them. They about to get a lot handed to them. Not even realizing that the enemy done tricked them by killing two, he, he was trying to kill two birds with one stone by getting the person that performing witchcraft uh, to do the witchcraft and then the person that it's on. Do y'all see what I'm saying? So in other words, he'll be getting them to do it, which is hurting them, and then they get put it on you to hurt you. There's two birds with one stone. That's how the enemy work with that. So I say he ain't that stupid, okay? So if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Feel free to leave it in the comments section if you would like. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. I hope that this video blessed a lot of you all for you all to know um, the signs that you may be in need of deliverance. I'm glad I made it through this video without sniffling, y'all. I did pretty good. But anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. I love y'all. Bye.